to all of our past and present Artful Afternoon participants, and a warm welcome to folks joining us for the first time. Welcome to our virtual session of Artful Afternoon, a dementia-friendly art program in partnership with the Art Gallery of Nova Scotia. I've been a facilitator with this program for the past three years, and I'm a regular art instructor with the Art Gallery of Nova Scotia's Art Education Department. Today, I'm going to walk us through the exhibition, Shifting Ground, featuring artworks by Aboriginal artists from the Art Gallery of Nova Scotia's permanent collection. Shifting Ground navigates the intrinsic connections between the past and the present, nature and culture, time and space. Charting the changing currents in contemporary Aboriginal art across Canada, as seen through the Art Gallery of Nova Scotia's permanent collection, this exhibition takes a circuitous route that begins here on the East Coast and finds its way to the Arctic. The Art Gallery of Nova Scotia's holdings of First Nations and Inuit art evidence changes in attitude, knowledge, and understanding as a society at large comes to terms with an art force that existed before European contact and continues revitalized and replenished by those artists who now create new and vibrant work. Masterworks of Aboriginal art have always existed, as every nation has had its masters. But for too long, those who govern public collections knew little about them. Anthropologists were the authorities on Aboriginal art, but their training and academic approach would only permit categorization of these items as artifacts. In this piece by Lance Belanger of Slick Black Enamel, we can see the integration of computer circuit boards and a braid of sweet grass arranged to form a butterfly. The metamorphic life of which symbolizes the balance between the spiritual and physical worlds of the Maliseet of New Brunswick. Charles Doucette is one of Nova Scotia's most promising artists, and his postmodernist work often tackles the contemporary issues affecting his community. While utilizing a wide range of materials, he works primarily with sculpture, often incorporating found objects. Signals, a communique from terra nullis, a Latin expression meaning nobody's land, consists of several empty television screens that have been attached to a thick sheet of shaped plywood, with each screen relaying messages suggestive of specific technological failures. The piece is shaped to outline the facial profile of the artist's son, with an antenna-like wire to form the eye bridging the work and all its implications to the present generation. With much less federal support, Haida, Salish, and other West Coast artists have also received attention, with marketing based solely on the traditional or primitive look. On the West Coast, the anthropological viewpoint has only recently been discarded as the standard of authenticity and value. Over the past 20 years, attitudes towards First Nations contemporary art and its parameters have changed. Carl Beam was the first Indigenous artist to have a major work bought by the National Gallery of Canada as contemporary art rather than Indigenous art. He is also the father of practicing artist Anong Miguan's Beam. Many lessons can be learned from different family members, teaching one another about the way they see and interpret their world. Both artworks use the symbolism of the eagle. The entire collection has made a difference as to how First Nations and Inuit art is perceived. Each artist has taken a step on the path 
toward a better understanding between Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal societies in Canada. Contemporary First Nations artists have long voiced their concerns, and today their struggle is paying off. First Nations artists now draw on their own creative history and produce meaningful works that define their place within global parameters. Jim Logan, former associate curator, First Nations Art, shares, Art remains a mystery and a mysterious source of power. When we consider the artistic accomplishment represented here, we can feel the spirit of our ancestors and the magic of this land, the power of the creative impulse, and we know the workings of imagination and determination. The future has never looked more promising for our artists to speak through their art, in the practice of their creativity, in drawing from their history, and in sharing that history with an enlightened, curious public. Inuit art has its own history, and Inuit culture is quite distinct from that of First Nations, which in itself is quite diverse. Inuit art blossomed under interested guidance and became a cottage industry from the late 1950s and the significant source of income for many communities in the far north, thanks to marketing schemes and federal support. Doors were opened to markets and major galleries in the United States, Europe, and Asia. In the north, the Inuit quickly became aware that the work being purchased by local southern-run art co-ops could not reference the contemporary. Depictions of airplanes, snowmobiles, or wooden homes caused alarm and were deemed unacceptable. In the early 1970s, the Inuit began to assume control of the co-ops and allow contemporary work to be marketed. Annie Pudigook began drawing in 1997 under the encouragement of the West Baffin Eskimo Cooperative in Cape Dorset. She is the daughter of Napachi and Evid Woodluk Pudigook, and the granddaughter of renowned artist Pitsiolak Ashuna. She has been influenced by her mother's graphics and the detailed drawings and prints of her uncle, Kananginak Pudigook. Pudigook's artworks challenge conventional expectations of Inuit art. Her subjects are not Arctic animals or scenes of nomadic existence from a time before settlement life. She is instead a chronicler of her times. Pudigook fills her interiors with the stuff of daily life. Clocks, calendars, graduation photos, inspirational quotes, and Inuktitut messages taped to the fridge in modern Inuit homes, and images of everyday routine.